Oh, here. You might need these. Katana told everyone, buckets suddenly appearing in their laps. Buckets? Why would we need these? Ruby asked. Let's just say, these next two monsters are somewhat disturbing. Katana explained. Everyone soon realized in horror exactly what she meant. So, we're gonna see some gross, creepy monsters. Nora began. And these are buckets for, in case we puke. Neo finished. Yep. Good catching on, girls. Katana confirmed. They can't be any worse than some of the grim we've faced in the past. Ironwood said stoically, clearly trying to mentally fortify himself. I hope you're right, Jimmy. Crow said uncertainly. Hello, my fellow hunters, today, it's time to get creepy. Rage spoke quietly as the view of a cave was shown, moving back and forth. This was revealed to be from the point of view of a moderately sized, pale and veiny monster with a round body, strange gecko-like feet and both a head and tail with a rather disturbing shape. What the hell? Just about everyone shouted all at once. Okay, that's a bit freaky. Ruby said, shivering a bit. I don't see any eyes anywhere. Does it even have any? Neo asked, jumping onto Yang's lap in fear, clinging tightly to the blonde. That's what I call going in blind. Yang said with a smirk. Nope. 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 Weiss cried frantically. I may need to start drinking again. Crow said. I'm not sure what to think about this one. Blake said awkwardly. The colorations are nice, monster not so much on the looks. Coco noted. It's actually cute in a weird way. Velvet admitted. No. That thing is just nightmare fuel there. Cinder said, pulling Ruby in close, the young reaper holding tightly to her former enemy. Huh, it's actually pretty decent at planning ahead a few steps. John admitted. What do you mean? Ren asked. It's clearly mapping out its path, making every step count. That's interesting, at least. John explained. It doesn't actually seem that bad. Pira said with a small smile. OMG, it's cute. Winter cried out, everyone looking to her. Specialist Schnee, are you all right? Ironwood asked, worried something was wrong with Winter, as this thing could not be described as cute. F forgive me, sir. I just have a bit of a weakness for creatures that seem relatively unimposing, that others believe they could defeat with ease. She explained. If you were to ask me, I'd say it looks disturbingly, phallic. Glinda said. Blake, Velvet, Coco, Cinder and Yang all blushed as they realized this, but Yang also smirked a bit. Glinda. You may not be wrong, but such a thing is hardly something to bring up in front of the students. Ajpin said. One. Yeah, this one is, quite unforgettable, and gets many different reactions from a number of people. That phallic remark is pretty common, though. Katana explained. Meet the K-A. Rage began introducing the creature, 
before crying out in shock and pain as the beast let out an ear-piercing roar that lasted five seconds, but those five seconds felt like nearly an eternity. Everyone covered their ears at this, especially the Faunus girls. Never mind. It's far less cute now, sir. Winter declared in irritation. It's worse than Ruby's dog whistle. Velvet cried, pinning her ears down as Coco helped cover her human ears. I can't take it. Blake shrieked, covering her human ears as Katana held her close and pinned down her cat ears, the demon woman's own ears completely frozen, to keep the sound out. Can you not? Rage asked in annoyance as the creature stood high, almost looking innocent as if to fool him that it wouldn't be doing it again, too, before quickly leaning forward as he tried again. Meet the K-A-A-H. He cried out again as the creature let out the same piercing roar as before. Gah! Meet! Rage snapped losing his patience and going word by word to test if Keizu was going to try and mess with him again, but it sat there innocently again. The. He went on. Still nothing. He. He broke the name in half, not risking more than a syllable as the creature began to lean forward. Zu a a a h. He cried as the creature let out its roar once more. Make it stop. Velvet screamed. Kill it with fire. Blake yelled. Wow, that actually is its weakness, fire. Good job, Blake. Katana praised. No jokes until that thing shuts up. The feline faunus cried out. Dea. Rage cried out, before a test screen was shown, returning to the hunt to show Alias standing next to the beast, which was horribly battle damaged, lying dead on the ground beside her. Meet the Keizu. Meet the fucking Keizu. Rage snapped, before regaining his composure. And, I guess his cousin, Giginox, but we'll get to him later. He explained as the image of a strange quadrupedal, gecko-like dragon made its way across the screen. Ooh, that giggy thing looks cool. Nora pointed out. No, those are its kids. Katana stated. But yeah, I like it, too. It looks cooler and sleeker than Keizu. Ruby agreed. And far more appropriate. Glinda added. A deer-like creature was then seen walking out of the bright light and into a dark cave, where it began drinking from a source of water in the cave. For now, it's time to talk the rubbery screamer. Rage declared before everything went black for a moment. Which, incidentally, I'm thinking, is also a fantastic villain name. He quickly threw into the conversation. H.M. I could see it. A weird name, but it could fit. John admitted. Do you spend a lot of time thinking about villain names? Ren asked. John simply looked at the screen, refusing to answer. It then returned to the scene with the dear creature in the cave. Keizu then, is the shadow in the mountain, the charging wyvern. He is. Well, divisive, I would say. Some appreciate him for the ghostly specter creeping along walls, slowly but surely approaching, before. 
Rage explained slowly and ominously as a strange mass was shown on the ceiling, flesh and veins moving beneath transparent skin, which was then revealed to be Keizu as it 